be leading a field of international athletes, but a lot of eyes will be on him. He is indeed, yes, Kennedy Sebekele. He is an astonishing athlete, three times Olympic gold medalist, multiple world champion, multiple world record holder. He's the outstanding favorite here today. It is a huge coup to have him here. Augustino Soloi, though, is a very, very strong athlete. So is Tuaymai, Mazibuko. They will give him stout competition if he's a tiny bit off his best form. And let's have a look at the Indians, too, because Indian distance running is improving all the time. These are the men who are clawing their way towards world class. Lachman is the uh, champion here, uh, holds the course record. Hirave will be strong too. And then athletes like Mukesh Singh will also provide stout competition. So I expect a great battle between the uh, Indian athletes. But it has to be that one man. As I said, a sea of humanity here. Kolkata going international. But when it comes to international, how big a name can it get? No bigger than Kenaniza Bekele. They call him the incredible. At the Paris World Championships in 2003, Kenaniza Bekele pulled off a ripper by pipping marathon legend Haile Gebrselassie to the tape and announcing to the world that a new king has arrived. But despite the stellar wins initially, doubts about his competence over the track still remained. Nobody expects, you know, some people saying that, you know, I'm not going to achieve over the track, but uh, that's the time I showed them, you know, my best time. The years following had one question on everyone's mind. Is Kenaniza Bekele one of the greatest of our time? He had after all won gold at the 2004 Olympics, gold at the 2005 World Championships and smashed his own 10,000 meter world record at Brussels. But come 2008, all speculation was out. Kenaniza was the new king of distance running. Post-2008, Kenaniza struggled with injury for five long years. Still struggling, Kenaniza made a comeback and won what is described as the greatest race of all time, where he took the tape in a sprint finish with Mo Farah. In 2014, he won at Paris in what was the sixth fastest marathon debut in history. Two years later at Berlin, he took the race in 020303, making him the all-time world number two. An incredible feat, an incredible athlete. What a story, great uh, rivalry with Gabriel Selassie and of course the Mo Farah story. But uh, Tim, what about the women? Yes, big name uh, Kenaniza, but Hela Kiprop leading a great women's field. Yes, Hela Kiprop is uh, as the favourite again in the women's race, but not it's not so clear cut as in the men's. I think Valentin Kipkita is quite capable of beating her. Hela though is very experienced. You know, she's a world championship medalist in the marathon. She has enormous strength, very good speed at the half marathon. Remember, remember, a half marathon is 21 kilometres. They're running 25 kilometres today. But that women's race promises to be very, very competitive. And let's have a look at the Indians as well, because the uh, Indian ladies, just like the men, are improving all the time. Surya L with 70-31 is knocking on the door of world class. Uh, and several other athletes there, I think, will cause her problems. Monica Athare, of course, not much slower over the half marathon distance. A really good opportunity today on a fast course. Yes, the men and the women, a strong field there, Tim, but it's almost getting to that time of the morning. The elite athletes will be out there getting soaking in the atmosphere of Kolkata and welcoming them for all of us is Ridhima. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to meet the elite men at the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K 2017. In bib number one, we have the incredible Kenanisa Beckley from Utopia. What you're looking at is someone with 21 Olympic and World Championship titles, six senior world records, and four straight World Championship goals. A living legend. Thank you so much, Kenanisa. Well, Ken three is Augustino Sule from Tanzania, who comes to Kolkata with a strong win at the Amsterdam Marathon. Thank you so much, Augustino. In bib number four, please welcome Michael Mazibuko from South Africa, a prodigy of legendary marathoner Henrik Ramada. Thank you so much, Michael. Well, to the Indian marathon elite and wearing bib number 101, we have G. Lakshmanan, the defending champion of the TSK 25K. And he is out here to establish his supremacy on the streets of Kolkata once again. 
Well, thank you so much, Lakshmanan. In bib number 112, and perhaps his biggest rival is Avinash Sable, who came in third at the Delhi earlier this year. Thank you so much, Avinash. Let's give all of them a rousing Kolkata welcome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the women field for this year's event. In bib number 71, please welcome Hela Kiprop from Kenya. This is Hela's third race in India this year, and she will be set to leave a lasting impression here in Kolkata. Thank you so much, Hela. In bib number 72, please welcome Valentine Kipkera of Kenya, the course record holder of the Mumbai Marathon will be eyeing her first podium in Kolkata. Thank you so much. In bib number 73 is Deba Bekuma from Ethiopia. The runner-up of this year's Barcelona Half Marathon will be looking to challenge the field. Thank you so much, Zibabe. And now to introduce the Indian women elite. In bib number 151 is El Surya, the Airtel Delhi Half Marathon 2017 champion and the fastest Indian women's half marathon finisher. Well, thank you so much. And in bib number 152 is Monica Athare. The defending champion at Kolkata will be gunning for a second crown here today. Thank you so much, Monica. And let's just wish all of Well, those athletes will be very, very nervous indeed. It's natural to be nervous. You have to channel that energy and put it into the race. But of course, you have to I use an awful lot of control in the opening kilometers. You have to hold back. These athletes have been training for many, many months very, very hard for this particular moment. Yes, of course, we are seeing some familiar faces there, and no less than His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, founder of Art of Living, and so appropriate to have him on the stand for something like a road race. Running has become a way of life in this country, and it's very apt that he will flag this off, Tim. Yes, it is indeed. There's that uh, elite field, the international men and uh, the top Indian men as well. Tuaymai there in blue. Lakshmanan in the red. He's the uh, Indian favourite. Sule very much amongst the favourites. Uh, a new young talent coming through from Tanzania. Just 20 years old, Sule, but a monstrous talent. He's a 2.10 marathon runner already at the age of uh, just 20. Has been selected for the Commonwealth Games for Tanzania as well. So around 20 seconds to go, these athletes shifting from foot to foot have to stay focused. Races can be won or lost with your uh, speed and the way you carry yourself over those first few kilometers. A cool head Five, is needed. Four, three, two, one, and there we start. Tata so they're underway then for this first edition as an international race of the... Uh, Tata Steel, Kolkata, 25 kilometers. The elite athletes, men and women, sets off for their 25 kilometer journey. That's around, what, uh, 15 miles. There or thereabouts, 15 and a half miles. It's a really good preparatory distance in some respects for anyone with a marathon a few weeks further ahead. But there's a great deal of pride at stake here already. And you can see nearest the camera there in that white vest and black shorts, just to the right of picture, Kennedy Sabekele, the outstanding favourite, very, very powerful in the legs. Bekele has a huge stride for such a relatively short man. Lovely, fluid runner. He's uh, many times a world cross-country champion, indeed. 16 times a world champion. If you include his uh, team gold medals, he has 22 world championships medals. Gautam. Most athletes are happy to have one gold medal in their career. He has 22 of them. I think Kolkata will just be stunned to see that this historic stretch, the stretch of Red Road, which was built for so many parades, and I think this in itself is a bit of a parade for the world to watch. A parade of runners making the city proud. And you can see the men coming through, the women just at the field in the back. El Surya was uh, starting off at the back, as she did at uh, the Airtel Delhi Half Marathon. Well, we expect these elite athletes, uh, the internationals, to separate themselves from the Indians fairly quickly. There are a few twists and turns on this course, but it's generally very flat. I think it's a fast course. The road surface is good for the most part. And, uh, of course, to shut down a city 
like Kolkata, shut down the traffic for several hours. The road system on any day of the week is a monstrous achievement. So a huge pat on the back for the authorities and the coordination that has been uh, completed from one department to another. Some 16,000 athletes, as I understand it today, taking part in the various races, and this is the point of that lance. It's a huge leap. It's a huge leap for the city. It's a huge leap for the culture in the city and the way of life for Kolkatans, and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a proud moment for them to show off to the rest of the world. Well, Ken and Isabella, in discussion yesterday, was saying that he intends to set out at a fairly uh, conservative speed for him and then gradually pick it up through the second half. So it'll be very interesting to see the way he does indeed approach this. We're looking at around 256 or 257 per kilometre. So they should be coming to the first kilometre point any second, Gautam. And that will give us an indication of roughly what sort of tempo they are shifting at. And there we go. I think that's the one kilometre point. And it was about 258. So just about perfect. Yeah, that's the one kilometre point where they've just made a U-turn, come back through the start-finish line, and they'll be uh, coming to the end of Red Road and taking a dramatic sweeping left turn past the governor's residence, the Raj Bhavan, which is also one of the most majestic buildings in Kolkata. It's such a lovely old part of the city. The heritage of the British Raj still remains looming large over every square kilometre. Well, you're right. I mean, I've only, I went to the Victoria Memorial yesterday. I've, you know, and you scratched the surface of this city and what it's got to offer. It is quite astonishing. I've enjoyed the markets a couple of times as well. But uh, certainly this afternoon, I'm planning to try and get out and see a little bit more of, of what the city has to offer. Yes. Beckley, though, almost acting as a Pied Piper here. You know, they're sitting almost in deference to his dominance, psychological dominance as much as anything else at this stage and running in his wake. That tells me that he's, he's up for this, you know. I, my, the early signs are that Kennedy Sebekle is feeling pretty good. And you can notice straight away how massive his thigh muscles are. I was talking to his agent last night at dinner, Jos Hermans, who is here from Holland, helps put together this elite field. And he was saying that Kennedy's principal quality is his power. You know, he has wonderful speed at middle distances. He's run the equivalent of about 350 for a mile. You know, break four minutes for the mile is special. He has great strength for the marathon as well. He's the second fastest marathon runner in history. And you combine that speed and power with the endurance he's got, and it's an irresistible combination. Yeah, wonderful shots from atop the 42. A bit of a wintry haze, as you can see. Not quite as cold as Tim Hutchings expected it to be. He had a bit of an acclimatization se session coming through Norway, but uh, it's a lot warmer than he expected. But through the haze, we can see the athletes going past the Eden Gardens and many other historic buildings. There you see the Eden Gardens coming up there, that magnificent cricket stadium. We'll come back to the athletes. We'll come back to the historic Tata Steel 25K after this break give up their timings, they give up all that to make sure they pace other runners. And those uh, pacing is critical, that you get your pace nice and steady throughout the race and don't go too fast. Speaking of too fast, back to the uh, head of the field. This is the elite men, Kennedy Sebekele there in the pink shoes towards the front to the right of picture is moving very well indeed. Just seems to be keen to keep his nose slightly in front there, doesn't he, Sebekele? He's got a lovely rolling style, but if you look too, for Bekele and how those pink shoes come up behind him, almost touching his backside. Bekele has this one almost sprinter's gait, which is quite unusual. Yes, you mentioned the legs, not the normal spindly legs we associate with many of the runners coming out of Africa. The, the strong thighs are so evident there as uh, they go past another historic part, the army cantonment area of Kolkata and let's remind you they've gone through Red Road, taken a U-turn, come back past Raj Bhavan, the Eden Gardens, past the sweeping waters of the Hooghly and then into uh, the area near Kidarpur, onto AJ Shiv Bose Road, past the Zoological Gardens and uh, the Taj Bengal and then uh, heading towards the nine kilometer mark through the urban part of the city and you'll see a couple of big famous golf courses coming up the Tolliganj Club and the Royal Calcutta Golf Club at the 13 kilometer mark the elite women as well keeping pace with the men just getting past the greenery there after they've taken the left turn beyond the river 
Well, there'll be a minute or so down on the men at the moment, of course, but uh, yes, they are moving well, and they're in the, the tall blue figure to the right of picture that, of course, Hel Hela Kiprop, who was fourth in the Delhi Half Marathon, what, just a, a month or so ago. Long, long legs. Hella Kiprop, she's a 2.21 marathon runner, so she's very, very fast, very strong Kiprop, watch her. Yes, we're going to take a quick break here, we're going to join the elite men and women, and of course, the amateur 25K continues here in Kolkata. 5K, co-presented by Tara Steel. Well, the elite athletes have been running now for some 13 and a half minutes, and this is uh, Segai Tuemi. Uh, who is in the lead at the moment, just 22 in uh, three days' time. Actually, this coming Wednesday, he'll be 22. He's a 2.13 marathon runner. On paper, he has no right to be alongside Kennedy Sebekele to the right of picture there in the white vest, but he's, he's a growing talent. He's run four half marathons this year, the most recent of which was a 61-minute clocking. And anything close to 60 minutes, uh, Gautam, is very, very good calibre indeed. I don't think there's any breaks this early in the race. 14 minutes on the clock, it would be very rash for anybody to try and uh, put pressure on Beckley and create a gap. So this group will hang together, I suspect, for a little while now. And Tim, even as you said that, Bekele back in the league, but in the back, it's good to see G. Lakshmanan in the red vest. The Indian men keeping pace with the elite men there. So I wonder how long this uh, cozy little group will last. No, that's exactly right. And uh, Lakshman, the course record holder for the Indians, is uh, being dragged along here to hopefully a very fast time. And I just hope he's judging it well and can maintain something like this sort of tempo. It would be a wonderful leap forward for Indian running if one of these Indian guys could mix it with these top internationals. In the red shorts, by the way, and the black vest, that's uh, La Rosa, Stefano La Rosa, a 32-year-old Italian, one of the top European distance runners at the moment. Yes, we've got a pacemaker as well, Diero, who trains with Kenaniza Bekele. And at the moment, it's Bekele who's making the pace. 14.33 at 5 kilometers. That's a good tempo they're uh, laying down here. And uh, I'm really pleased to see that. It shows they're moving at around 2.56 or 2.55 tempo per kilometer, which is exactly what they planned. Now, there is an athlete there, Asefa Diero, who is in a blue vest. There he is, second to left, I think. And he is meant to be, in effect, a pacemaker for this group, to lay down the early rhythm and help them get into that nice, steady state of equilibrium. But the target was 256, 257. They're moving at a pretty much exactly that. So great job so far by this pack. Yes, they passed the flyover. It's good to see uh, people on the track there. The Indian women now, again, in a group of their own, will be uh, maybe about a minute behind the men there. Uh, the law keeping a close eye on them. Yes, and they are very close together, aren't they? You could almost throw a blanket over that uh, group of Indian women. Monica Athare hails from a, a farming family from Nashik in Maharashtra. But she's going for her second title here in Kolkata, is uh, Athare. And at the moment, nobody uh, giving anything away. It looks to me like they're keeping their cards very, very much up their sleeves. This is, has been one of the problems to some degree with the Indian athletes over the last few years, Gautam, and that is that they are so determined to beat each other, they get caught up in this sort of domestic contest rather than really attacking the clock, and trying to go for fast times. You know, it shouldn't be this tightly bunched, frankly, at this stage. And sometimes, as you said, not just beating each other, but being in awe of each other. When El Surya won the Airtel Delhi Half Marathon, her first reaction was that I almost feel sorry for having beaten the people I idolize, the girls I idolize, and rather than thinking of her own achievement and what it means for her to propel her forward. Oh yeah, no, that's a real psychological hurdle for a lot of athletes, is to stop admiring somebody and get, get, get your head around the idea that you can beat them. I mean, I struggled with myself many, many years ago in my international career. You know, some athletes who were fast were sort of gods to me, and I should have not had them on a pedestal. I should have regarded them as a target. Yes, a great example of that, of course, is the event ambassador Mike Powell, who used to idolize Carl Lewis, but quickly realized he needs to make an enemy of him if he is to start winning medals and breaking world records. And what do you do? You put their face on a dartboard in your bedroom or something like that. It's, uh, it's a difficult one because I think most of us are not naturally aggressive. You're not naturally resentful or angry at somebody. But that's almost the state of mind you have to get into to really target somebody. 
Yes, I can uh, confirm that about my co-commentator Tim Hutchings. Definitely not naturally aggressive. It'll take a lot to get some anger out of him. But uh, again, if you have a look at uh, the Indian women there, just going past the flyover we saw about a minute ago for the men, the Kidderpur flyover, just past Prince Ebkhart. The left out of your picture is the Hooghly River. And it's about this point in the race where they'll peel off and head towards uh, the inner part of the city, the zoological gardens and the Taj Bengal. We'll take a quick break and join the elite athletes and of course the all the Kolkata Kolkatans who have come out to run. By Tara Steel. Certainly a historic race here in Kolkata. You can see the uh, Indian women have just gone over the bridge entering the area of Alipur. This is where the zoological gardens are and have a look at the prize money, Tim. 275,000 rupees for the first of the Indian women, 200,000 for second, 150,000 for third. So plenty to play for, plenty to run for, uh, not just in terms of money, but also in terms of getting themselves a status going forward. Well, and that's great prize money. I mean, that's about $4,000. It's well over £3,000 uh, UK. You know, it, in an Indian environment, that is great money to take into your training for the next race over the, over the coming months. So really good to see these races now helping to fund the top Indian runners. Yes, uh, this is where uh, every Sunday morning, Tim, uh, growing up as a child, I, exactly at that stretch, we'd be there going to the zoological gardens, which is right next door. But tell us, Tim, about the Kenyans and Ethiopians. Why is it that despite Africa producing a lot of runners, what is it special about Kenya and Ethiopia? Well, of course, East Africa has the Rift Valley. These athletes live at altitude. They've been born at altitude for hundreds of years, thousands of years. Most of these athletes run to school as well, run back from school. Uh, they have wonderful physiological acc accoutrements as well, which enable them to, to adapt to distance running, long of limb, longer Achilles tendons and so on, and great sets of hearts and lungs. Yes, uh, and a lot of training, as uh, Tim mentioned, at altitude. Let's have a look at this rivalry, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians. Since the beginning of the modern Olympics, North America and Europe, especially the East European countries with communist regimes at the helm, held a command over distance running for decades. But one victory changed it all. 1960, Ethiopian Abebe Bikila stunned the world at the Rome Olympics and ushered in a new era of East African dominance in distance running. Today, the Kenyans and Ethiopians, without a shadow of doubt, are the world's greatest distance runners. But what is it that makes them superhuman? Longer legs and thinner calves, high starch diet, altitude training, running to school as children, or is it their traditional evolution as herders? With science and theorists still searching for an answer, the Kenyan and Ethiopian dominance over distance running remains an amazing tale of human biodiversity. Certainly is. It's been a great story seeing them come through uh, world over, be it every distance right from your 5,000, 10,000 distances that you're familiar with, the Commonwealth bronze medal and all. Yeah, I mean, a long, long time ago that, but you know, I, I, part of the reason, it's not just that they have a lot of natural qualities that enable them to be good runners, but also they throw a lot of people at it. It's like cricket in India. You know, cricket here is virtually a religion. Every youngster wants to be a great batsman, a great bowler. In India, in, in Kenya and Ethiopia, every kid wants to be a great runner. They all want to be Harley Gebre Selassie. They all want to be uh, one of the wonderful Kenyan runners, male or female. You know, they've got so many role models, so many mentors to look up to, heroes and heroines. And that is vitally important, you know, for, for, for running in India to really move on. It's great that now de India is developing its own stars for kids to look up to. Certainly is, but let's quickly try and catch up on uh, what the elite men are up to. And there we see another familiar sight of Kolkata, Tim, the tram tracks. They've just entered the tram lines uh, just inside the heart of Alipur. And we can see once again the leaderboard slightly changing hands with uh, Mazibuko taking over from uh, Kenaniza Bekele and Lakshman are not too far behind. Yeah, Mazibuko, they're the tall figure to the left of picture in the white vest. He's a 31-year-old South African. Now, on paper, he can't rub shoulders 
shoulders with Kenanita Beckley. He's a 2.12 marathon runner. Don't forget Beckley there to the right in the pink shoes has run 2.03 for a marathon. But Mazi Buko is giving a really good account of himself at the moment. Uh, and we believe this is only his second race outside South Africa. What is important with Mazi Buko, though, is that his coach, Hendrik Ramala, is a former New York City marathon champion. He was a fabulous half marathon runner. And what's really good news, too, talking about the, these African athletes and the elite athletes, is that Lakshmanan of India is still there. We're in the red vest towards the back of this group. Lakshmanan is mixing it. You can see Mazi Buko there. Now, that's interesting, gesturing towards Kennedy Sabetle, who's got the bottle of drink, says, can I have a drink? Good sportsmanship, that. I don't think we'd see that happen if it was in the latter stages. But uh, Muzzy Buko there takes a drink, or does he? Just pours it over his head. He's beginning to feel the rising temperature, perhaps. In the blue vest there, uh, just beside them is Tuwe to the left of picture. And the red shorts of the Italian La Rosa, still very much in, pre uh, in picture, as they've been running now for, what, Tom, nearly 27 minutes. Kenanisa Beckley to the right of picture. Well, at 35, many people feel that he's... His best years are behind him, but his agent, Jos Hermans, who knows him like a son, says he can still break the world record for the marathon. That world mar marathon record, remember, is 2.02.57. He's won three Olympic gold medals, remember, without a fantastic double in Beijing back in 2008. He has a drawer full of uh, world championship medals at cross country and on the track as well. He holds the world records for 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. And now that's an interesting shot. Just got his head down there and looked to me like he was leaning into this a little bit. I wonder if he's just getting a little bit impatient with any surges that are being put in by other athletes here. Kenanisa Beckley. Clearly, for my money, uh, he's looking very, very comfortable, Gautam. Tim, you were asking me about this being a fairly flat course. Well, this is the first of the areas where they climb up a slight bridge. They're on the bridge right now, and they're going downhill, led by... Uh, Kenaniza Bekele there, and not just Lakshmanan, but you can see Avinash Sable in the blue vest also keeping uh, pace. In fact, Sable now ahead of Lakshmanan. So it's really good to see the two Indian runners competing, and of course, keeping very good pace with the champion Kenaniza Bekele as they come down the bridge and enter another very crowded part of the city, which at uh, this time, even on a Sunday morning, would be teeming with cars. But it's good to see the vehicles have stepped aside and they're letting the runners make this piece of history in Kolkata. Yeah, I think this is their second hill. They, they hit one hill at around five and a half kilometers, then again at just around nine, nine and a half kilometers. And of course, they have to accommodate these hills on the return as well. So there are four climbs they have to make, but they're not, they're not big climbs. It is a fast course. Yes, you're right. The second of the two bridges was the Kaligat Bridge. That's the bridge they just uh, came down. But uh, remember, it's getting to 10 past 7 in the morning here in the City of Joy. And we're expecting the open 10K run. We've seen the amateurs in the 25K. And that is, as we said, the mini sea of humanity waiting for the open 10K run to begin. And look at that. Look at the number of people who have turned up there. And there you see, once again, His Holiness, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, ready to inspire the city, ready to talk about the art of living, not just through his preaching, but also through the art of running. There's another familiar figure. Mike Powell, world record holder in the long jump, still held the record for many, many, many years. Saurav Ganguly behind him, another face of the marathon. He is such an icon in the city of Kolkata. Admits that he doesn't like this time of the morning, but he's turned up to inspire the city. And the countdown is almost set to begin for the open 10K run. Such big names here for all these runners who are going to be running 10 kilometers in the open section. And the countdown has begun. Another five seconds and you will see a surge down Red Road. The open 10K category in this year. Great to see them getting underway. Gautam, these thousands of athletes. Remember when this, first, this race was first staged, uh, what, three or four years ago? And entry numbers were relatively uh, conservative. <laughs> Sprint over the first few hundred yards. Everybody can do that. Let's, 
Let's see you in half an hour's time, son. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really good. The city has embraced running the running culture. These numbers will grow and grow in coming years, and uh, race getting into the race will be the achievement. I thought he was about to take off for the long jump, inspired by Mike Powell, who doesn't run a, an indecent uh, 100 meters in just over 10 seconds, and of course has held the world record for the longest time ever once held by Bob Beeman in 1968, and we should hope to have Mike Powell in our studio later on in the program. But there you can see number 3704, his sprint has uh, just come to slightly controllable proportions now. And many others, of course, will be walking, waving to the likes of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Saurav Ganguly, Mike Powell, so many big names here. And there you can see it, it's selfie time as well for those who are not sprinting. Yeah, I think that young man who was sprinting right at the start there was had his 15 seconds of glory. That's it, his, his time in the spotlight. Did you expect this sort of turnout, Gotham, in your home city? You, you know, you've lived here since you were a youngster. You, you know the city intimately. Are you surprised? I am absolutely gobsmacked if I could find a word, if I could pull a word out of the dictionary that truly describes how I feel, because really, Kolkatans, people in the eastern part of India, were known to treat a Sunday morning as a time to lie in. And now that fitness has caught up, you can see they're not lying in at all. Listen, I can identify with that. For me, Sunday mornings are perfect if it's a, a coffee and toast in bed, the Sunday papers, just kick back and relax. But. Um, I did, I did this many, many years, a long, long run on a Sunday morning. Oh, you can see, we talked about the numbers that have registered, but it's, it's, it's huge. The weather is brilliant. It's not quite as cool as it can be at uh, this time, heading towards Christmas, a week before Christmas. It could get down to about 11 degrees, but I reckon it's about 16 or 17 degrees, and you cannot see Red Road at the moment. The surface of the road is invisible. It's been taken over by the human face of Kolkata. Well, it's a, a river of humanity. I love these shots. I think it's absolutely fabulous, and they're all moving pretty well. We can go back to the elite men's race, though, I think, now. An update after, what, 32 and a half minutes on the clock. And uh, it's still uh, Toy Mike, who is moving well here, the 21-year-old uh, South African. He's run 61 minutes three times for a half marathon. Anything under 62 minutes, down towards 61 and 60 minutes. Very, very quick. World-class running for the half marathon. And indeed, he showed a lot of potential a few years ago. He's fourth in the World Championships for junior athletes. That's under 20. Uh, four years ago was Tway Mai, so he has got real pedigree. Yes, there you can see next in front of the Italian, De La Rosa, there is... Uh the first of the Indians, Avinash Sable. We can't see uh, Lakshman, I think he's fallen back from this group. So it's Sable running a, a lone race for India at the moment in that leading group. I think that's Sable. We just saw him go out of shot to the right of picture. He's uh, in a red vest, but... No, Sable, there he is in the yeah, blue vest. Sable Avinash, running yes. really well, but uh, Lakshmanan is at the back there as well. So he's almost in touch with this group. And uh, this is wonderful to see Avinash Sable mixing it. The 23-year-old who was third in the Delhi half marathon amongst the Indians uh, just a few weeks ago. That was his debut for half marathon. This is probably his longest race ever, in fact. Yes, he's an accomplished steeplechaser, is a half marathoner with the Indian Army, as so many of these athletes are, the long distance runners who come out of India. And we've come to one of the widest parts of uh, the roads in Kolkata, getting near Rashbihari Avenue. And very shortly, they're coming up to the 12 kilometer mark almost the halfway mark of this 25k we'll be seeing the two golf courses certainly they won't be eyeing the golf courses they'll be sticking to the roads the Tolligans club to their right and the historic royal calcutta golf club will be coming up shortly to their left as we see the good strain this is the bridge that is about half a kilometer away from the golf courses yeah, Kennedy Zabakale there to the right just checked his watch. He was hoping to run around 72 minutes today for the uh, full distance. The world record, or the world best, I should say, because this is not a world record distance anymore, is 71 minutes 18 by Dennis Kimeto of Kenya. That was set, what, five years ago in Berlin, the German capital. But uh, Bekele there to the right of picture, he said he'd be happy if he can get within about a minute of that today because he's building up for his next big race. Now, nobody knows what that is. We suspect it'll be one of the big spring marathons in April, perhaps the London Marathon or the Boston Marathon or something like that. But for Beckley, this is a very important stepping stone towards that next major goal. And uh, he looks comfortable, doesn't he? For my money, he looks lovely and relaxed there to the right of the He's got a long raking stride for a relatively short, powerfully built man. And it's him, at almost the halfway mark, 
Diro realizes, hang on, I'm supposed to be the pacemaker. This is my job. So let me start setting the pace. Yes, it's 12 kilometers too late, but let me do my job. Well, that's exactly right. Yes, uh, Asefa Diro, who uh, was brought as a pacemaker from Ethiopia, is uh, only a 63-minute half marathon runner officially, but uh, uh, talking to Jos Hermans last night, the, uh, the Dutch agent, he said that he claims to have run around 61 minutes for a half marathon. He trains a few times a week with Ken and Lisa Bekele, the athlete right in the center of picture there in the blue, the left-hand athlete of the two as we look at them. Uh, he claims he trains with uh, Ken and Lisa Bekele several days a week. Sule there, getting another drink, pouring it over his head to Tanzania. He is feeling the heat. Yes, they're just coming to the U-turn, just past the 12-kilometer mark. And uh, there they come now, the leading group. It's wonderful still to see. We have to keep reiterating this. Avinash Sable in the blue vest, just behind Kenaniza Bekele in the red sneakers. This is the part they've gone past, the Rabindra Sarobar metro station, coming up to Toligunj Club on their right and our left. And uh, very shortly, as they get to uh, what you're seeing on the right of your picture, the 14-kilometer marker is after they take the U-turn. They're at 12 and a half kilometers now, and it's at the 13-kilometer mark that they turn around for the second half of this historic Tata Steel 25K here in Kolkata. There they are, coming up just past the median that they're gonna uh, take a U-turn in about a minute and a half from now. This is the section of golf courses. There's so much greenery around Kolkata, not just where the start line is, Red Road, the Medan, Fort William, all the greenery, Victoria Memorial at one end of it. And here we see the two golf courses, 36 gorgeous holes of golf on either side of these runners. They're running down one of the major thoroughfares of the city of Kolkata, coming past Prince Anwar Shah Road, the crossing, and this is the time they'll be eyeing the U-turn. What I'm pleased to see, Gautam, is that three or four athletes have taken the lead over the last 20 minutes or so. You know, they all seem to be very much up for this. Sometimes you get races which are slow and tactical and everybody's watching each other. But this today seems to be a fairly aggressively run race, and that's why they're on good schedule. The last time I was able to check, they were on schedule for about 72 and a half minutes. That is mighty quick for 25 kilometers. La Rosa having a good run, the Italian there in the uh, red shorts. I'm really pleased to see him giving a good account of himself. He's a good track runner as well. La Rosa. He's run about an equivalent of about a 357 mile. He's run 211 for a marathon. So he's got a great combination of speed and strength as well. I shall be fascinated to see how long the Italian, the top Italian distance runner really, can live with these, uh, these East Africans. Dero, the pacemaker, just looks behind his uh, shoulder. This is the second half of the race. They're going to turn around, go back down this road, go over the Kaligard Bridge. Turn right again, exactly where they came from, down through Alipur, and uh, they're going to be heading back close to the race course. And down past Victoria Memorial, left at, again, the Lung, the Greenery, down Red Road to the finish line, exactly where they started. And just behind them, the elite women. Yes, and they're closely bunched as well, aren't they? Very closely bunched. You can see to the right of picture there, for example. Kitur, I think it is, second to the right of picture. How closely she holds her hands up to her, towards her chest, almost as though her hands are tied around her neck with short string. And I understand that some coaches think that that actually saves energy because there isn't so much movement in the shoulders and the upper arm, which they say wastes energy. So while most of us would run with our arms a lot lower down by our hips, uh, you can see that Kitur there, second to right, with that high arm carriage style, as well as actually, to be uh, frank, Kipkita to the right of picture, Valentine Kipkita, one of the favorites, with her hands, almost like they're strapped with Velcro to her, the, the chest of her vest. And my first reaction was it could even be a boxing pose early in, uh, early in a bout, <laughs> yeah. and you're just trying to feel your opponent and, and be a little bit defensive. Well, the favourite, Hela Kiprop, to the left of picture, has a very different running gait, doesn't she? Very sort of flailing with the arms, very relaxed in the top half of the body. Yes, very different, very different from all the others. Uh, there's no Velcro for Hela Kiprop. 
Well, Hela Kiprop with the 67-minute half marathon is the quickest in the field. She's the left of picture there in that blue vest. Probably the tallest in this field as well, Hela Kiprop. Delightful uh, young lady. Had talked to her at a press conference a couple of days ago. She was talking about her home life in uh, Kenya, where the, her running at the age of 32 has helped her become a very, very wealthy woman. She has 60 apartments that she manages as a business. She won Cochin Half Marathon back in 2013, so India is almost a second home for her. Indeed, she's run the uh, Bangalore Half Marathon many times as well. Over the last three years, she's been fourth, second, and fourth, second, and third in the Bangalore uh, 10K. That is. Yes, and we've also got uh, one of the Indian athletes keeping pace here. So just like the men, the Indian girls too are keeping a very close eye on the girls. We'll take a quick break here, but don't go too far. Kolkata awaits this little piece of history. Very important. Plus, you know, while running, you give exercise to some parts of the body. In yoga, you give even other parts of the body which, uh, which do uh, need some sort of exercise. Meditation, yoga, running, all this will, and good food. Yes, we can have a look, uh, Your Holiness. We can see the group has sunk a little bit. We've got some of the lead runners who are there right now. The champion in the red sneakers, Kenaniza Bekele, he's starting to assert himself. But guess what? We haven't lost our Indian athlete as well, Tim. No, we haven't done. That's that's revelationly. That's a real revelation, you know. And, and what I love to see about these athletes is in common with with your philosophies is that they they exude a real calmness when you meet these guys in the hotel. They are very very calm and balanced individuals. Absolutely, absolutely. You know that has it has to happen that way. <laughs> the mind becomes more stable, calm, and serene. Um, and also, you see. Um, the running, it's not competing with somebody else. You are doing your hundred percent. When you put your hundred percent, there is certain satisfaction that comes within you. You feel a sort of completion within you. And that's more important. It's not important how much you run, how much the others are running. You are not looking to others whether they are running faster than me or more than me. You just do your hundred percent. That's important. In fact, just moments ago, Tim and I were chatting even before you came in with your words of wisdom that some runners tend to look over their shoulders and maybe they don't succeed as much, but the ones who are focused in their zone... In themselves, yeah. In their own, yeah. ...are the ones who are succeeding. We can look at that on our screen. I think Bekele is a great example of that. He's been focused. He's not been looking around. Some of the others have been uh, doing a bit of charity, passing the water around, which is good once in a while. That comes from confidence, I think. You know, what, the wonderful thing about distance running is that you have to have a long-term plan. You have to train for many months with real patience okay. and focus on a long goal. And Beckley is uh, remarkable at that. When he hits the front in races and puts on his sprint, he doesn't look around. It's one of the few athletes I know who doesn't give in to that temptation to look around. Yeah. You know, Tim, we are privileged to have His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar in the studio. I suspect if some of these runners found out that he was here, they'd be throwing us out of the studio and wanting time alone to try and improve on their running, improve on their lifestyles, improve on their fitness. So much about the mind, so much about the calmness. Well, the calmness, of course, is important, but there has been some regression so far in this race because that target time we saw on the screen just now, 1.11.18 by Dennis Cometo. That is the world best, the fastest time ever. If you kept going at that speed, you'd hit the marathon distance in almost exactly two hours. So it is a very, very tough goal indeed. And we can look at the elite women's race now. That's still a big pack. Now, that tells me there's, what, about nine ladies there. That tells me that they're running at a more conservative tempo because if anybody was really pushing the pace and running aggressively, so they do have their aggressive moments, uh, then, then they would have split up more. They'd been more spread out. And there's the target times. Mary Kaitani in 1.19.53. That was back in 2010 in Berlin. She ran that time. Suda Singh, 1.27.31, is a great target for the top Indian ladies as well. El Surya is up there with the group, the winner of the Airtel Delhi Half Marathon. She's running a wonderful distance in the bright yellow vest. She's keeping just pace, just behind the lead runners and almost breaking away from the group, Hela Kiprop, with her own unique style of running. She enjoys the tram lines more than the road surface. What, what do you think about women in sports, in, in um, taking part in events like this, mass participation sports? Because the same health philosophy applies, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, 
uh, when this when it comes to sports the women are as good as men are in fact better than men in many <laughs> many aspects yeah. yes it's almost it's almost coming to a level playing field we only need to encourage more and more women folks to participate in the sports that's necessary especially in this country and all of uh, asia more participation of women would be um, would be need of that need of the day to keep them healthy does, now does your philosophy encompass or allow for the aggression that's needed to be competitive in races like this no see a uh, healthy competition is always good okay good good <laughs> yeah i think that uh, beautifully sums up the whole spirit of the running that we are seeing the healthy competition we are seeing uh, all the runners the men and the women focused on their task at hand but passing the water around when necessary and and, and really looking towards the target well, but when, when i say healthy competition i mean uh, you get inspired by others performance you're not jealous about it you're not uh, angry i mean you are not angry about yourself not but not performing as well as good as that but when you see someone performing better you feel even more inspired you feel like uh, doing better that's what i would say as a healthy competition yes so we've also got need discipline even in the army but everything starts in the starts mind from the mind okay. Well, let's just quickly go back to this elite race because Kennedy Sebekle has kicked in very hard with 56 minutes on the clock. That's a vicious acceleration from the world record holder at 5,000 and 10,000 metres. Uh, the pack was just beginning to look a little too comfortable through that third quarter of the race. They've been running now for, what, 56 minutes, just over 56 minutes. And this is a decisive break from Beckley. The power and fluidity of his running is all too evident now. A little glance over his shoulder there just to check what sort of damage this surge has done. Uh, but there's the news that he will want to have seen, or the sight he will want to have seen, about a 20 or 30 metre gap back to, uh, I think that's Mazibuko in, the, in second place. But certainly Beckley now surely is heading for victory. Tata Steel, Kolkata 25K, co-presented by Tata Steel. What a sight that is. On his own, the champion, Kenaniza Bekele. For the longest time, he was in the pack. But before we went to the break, we showed you he broke away. There are some 10K runners on the other side of the bike. And he is in a class of his own, Tim. Well, he is indeed, yes. I mean, Haile Gebre Selassie has been the great Ethiopian runner of, year, of years gone by. Gebre Selassie, a multiple gold medalist and world record breaker. They call him the emperor. Well, this is King Kenanisa, Kenanisa Bekele, bouncing along on the roads of Kolkata. And that break, about seven or eight minutes ago, has created a gulf between him and his pursuers. I don't think he'll be caught now. The question mark really is about the time now. How close can he get to 72 minutes? That was his target time, something in the 72 minute region. Let's not forget that world best, the fastest time in history is 71.18. The fastest time in the world this year, by the way, is 72.46. So that would be a very, very nice target indeed. That was set in Tokyo, uh, in Japan, back in February by uh, three athletes. Well, Beckley might well run faster than them. And certainly looks like now he's decided to set a pace for himself. Uh, he mentioned to you, Tim, at, uh, at that press meet that he was looking at somewhere around 72. They've just gone past uh, almost at the 21-kilometer marker. They're on Kidapur Road. This is the dock area of the city of Kolkata. Just behind him to the left are the walls that are the residences for the Docklands area. And pretty big dock over here leads into the Hooghly River as they'll be coming up to Princep Cart very shortly. Good to see Kenanisa taking a little glance over his shoulder there. He will have seen that he's got a pursuer still in sight. I think actually it's uh, Segai Twaime of South Africa who's back in uh, second place. Uh, and because the cap was only 50 or 60 metres, it keeps the nerves there for Beckley. It, it shows him he can't relax and ease off on the throttle because he could yet be caught. So while he's pushing along here very hard and beginning to pass a lot of the 10K runners who have obviously run much less than half the distance he's covered, uh, he is uh, having to keep focused, having to keep working, but the work rate now is very intense indeed. He knows he'll be aware of that time that we can see at the top of picture. That is on the lead car. There's a big clock on, on the top of the lead car. So he can see that time, and he will be calculating all the time. He knows he's got about nine minutes of running to come. Yeah, they're going down Hospital Road, just coming up to Queensway. Imagine the, the shock or the surprise for some of these 10K runners who uh, are now keeping pace, in a sense, with Kenaniza Bekele. The only difference is he's running 25K. They're running 10K. 
Yeah, but look at the speed he's moving at and the length of that stride now. This is a stride. This is a man who has defeated the world again and again in the Olympics on the track in the World Championships and the cross country. He was, is the greatest cross country runner in history. He's lifted so many individual titles. And actually, he took his first international medal back in 2000. As a youngster, he got a medal in the World Junior Championships. So he's been doing this for 17 years. And in his press conference a couple of days ago, he did sound a little bit weary at times. He said, look, you know, yes, I run hard every day and I have to keep the training going every morning and every evening. These top athletes, of course, train twice a day. But he is sounding a little bit bit tired to me. Lots to uh, play for. Uh, look at the, the uh, elite prize money there. 7,500 US dollars. Uh, it looks like uh, that's going to be in the pocket of Kennedy Zabekele. That's the Queensway U-turn. He's just gone past. And that, of course, is on top of the appearance money. These are professional athletes. Uh, and, and they, you know, they get paid just like great tennis players, like athletes from any sport, for their appearance. They're in high demand, so it's wonderful that we've got Beckley here. But he will go home with a great deal more than seven and a half thousand dollars, I can assure you. Yes, uh, the 22-kilometer mark is uh, what they've just gone past there. A cluster of 10k runners here that uh, he's just coming, in a sense, to lap them almost. They're running two different races. Hello, get out of the way, sir. Thank you. <laughs> he doesn't want any distractions at this stage from young, enthusiastic kids who certainly represent the face of Kolkata, but he represents the face of the world of running and how good it is for the city. When you get a side-on shot like this, you get a much better idea of just how fast he's moving here, covering the ground. Watch a spot on the pavement or on the sidewalk, and you can see how fast he's going. Look at the difference there. At 22 kilometers, Bekele only three seconds down, apparently. Twemai, if he's three seconds down, then he's closing. I'd be surprised at that, but Sule, a further 14 seconds down uh, from Bekele, and indeed another 11 seconds behind Twemai. So uh, the gaps are there. But if it was three seconds at 22K, that wasn't very long ago, then Bekele has got to remain focused. The trouble is, if he were to glance around now, never mind about the corners and so on, if he were to glance around now, he'd try, have trouble picking out his pursuer from all the 10K runners. And that is often a complication in these sorts of situations. Another iconic roundabout is negotiated by Kenaniza Bekele. This is really the prettiest part of the city. You've been to the Victoria Memorial, Tim. He's just passed the front gate of uh, that, uh, the grandeur of the Victoria Memorial, past the Medan on his left, which is where all the young kids of Kolkata grow up playing cricket and football. And I think after today, they'll be spending a lot of time early morning running around that uh, big Medan. It may be my eyes playing tricks on me but I reckon he's getting quicker he seems to be accelerating look checking his clock he's desperate to get the world best for this year the 2017 world best of 112 46 now funnily enough that is held by three Kenyans Kipiego, Korea and Birech all ran 112 46 in Tokyo back in February and of course there was this great rivalry between Kenya and Ethiopia almost East African cousins the Ethiopians love to get one over on the Kenyans so if he could knock them off the top spot in the world race rankings he would be delighted yes he certainly would be uh, delighted as you said I, I don't think your eyes were deceiving you he was picking up the pace just before that picture we saw him glancing a couple of times over his shoulder just to make sure that the likes of Tuimai are in the distance yeah, and, and Bekele is unique. You look at his physical prowess and his physical qualities, the power he's got in those legs, a relatively small torso, and yet powerful shoulders as well. It's a wonderful combination. Keep an eye on that clock. We've just passed the 68-minute mark, and he's passed the 23-kilometer marker, so just under two kilometers to go, and he'd have to do it in about four minutes if he wants to beat the world's best time for 2017. Well, that would be a very big ask. If that indeed was the 23 kilometer marker, then he'll be, well, he'll add another five and a half, five minutes 50 to, to the clock now, and he's not going to get near the world best for 2017. But only seven men have ever gone under 72 minutes. You know, we, we, we tend with Kennedy to Beckley to judge him by different standards. We're saying, well, he should get the best for this year. That's his target, 72 and bits. Actually, anything around 74 minutes is mighty fast, very, very quick indeed. And it's the pressure you get, the burden you carry when you've broken world records, is people expect so much of you every time you put on your racing shoes. Certainly do. And uh, 
here's another landmark coming up we're very close to 70 minutes it's an hour and 10 minutes for this uh, historic run over 25 kilometers through the streets of Kolkata the Tata Steel Kolkata 25k going international for the first time and you cannot get a better international representation than that man on your screen Kenaniza Bekele a champion for the ages and looking like he's going to be the first international champion here over 25 kilometers in Kolkata. And this is a very nice way to close his racing year of 2017. You know, he, Gautam, he's had a difficult year in 2017. He ran the Dubai Marathon in January, or he started it, but he got trodden on when there was a fall and a bit of a tussle at the start of the race. He had to drop out later on in the race. Then he came second in the London Marathon a few months later in April. Fabulous time, fabulous race there. And then he dropped out of Berlin back in September. Now the predicted time for Beckley at 5k was 112.55, they're at 23 kilometers at the current pace, 113.45, so he was going to miss that world best for 2017 by about a minute as things look at the moment, despite his closing speed, I'm sure he can't make up that gap, so he might miss the 2017 world best, but the good news is he's fit, he's healthy, there would appear to be no injuries, and this would project him towards his next big race. Certainly, with about a kilometre and a half to run in Kolkata, Kenaniza Bekele, with the distinctive red sneakers, leads the way. That right turn is going to lead him up to the grandeur of Red Road. You know what he almost needs now, and it does help very often in these situations, you're under pressure, you're working hard, is to have somebody alongside you. If you're battling in a race alongside somebody, that's when the extra time gets made up because you're racing somebody uh, and the urgency, the, the mind over body factor becomes very, very significant. He's here, the only thing he's racing against is himself. Eliud Kipchoge told us that. He said, uh, given a choice, I'd always like to have somebody against me who I can compete with. But yet, when he did break records in London, when he did perform so well in Delhi, twice he was completely on his own. We're well, looking at a man who is the greatest distance runner in history. There's no doubt about that. He has 16 World Championship individual gold medals, 11 gold medals from the World Cross Country Championships. And after a difficult 2017, he dropped out in Berlin back in September. It was a wet and cold day in the German capital and he dropped out at around 30 kilometers. Well, this is some consolation for him to close his 2017 year with a victory in a big race here in Kolkata. It will give him real heart, real fire in his belly for going to the training over the next few months and project him into 2018. Anything but cold and wet here in Kolkata. It's a gorgeous winter morning, just a shade over 15 degrees. It's, it's the best time of year to come to the city. You're a week away from Christmas. The Christmas shoppers are out there at the moment, taking a bit of a breather to keep their eyes on Kenaniza Bekele, just coming past Fort William Circle as he approaches the final turn, the sweeping turn into the finish straight on Red Road, where they started about an hour and 12 minutes ago. Well, there's 72 and a half minutes on the clock. His target was 72.46. It looks like he's going to fall just short of that, but the victory is the most important thing. Winning is the vital factor in any sport. Great performances on the way to that victory is the most uh, is the icing on the cake, I suppose you could say. 400 meters to go, he's just passed that sign. It is going to be a mighty quick time, just outside 73 minutes by the looks of things, but this has been a majestic run from King Kenanisa Bekele. 300 meters to run, still he pounds along on the road. Were this on a track, he'd be running down the back straight. He has slaughtered the opposition here today. Strong opposition who put up stout resistance for the first three quarters of the race. And then when he cut loose, the race was done and dusted. Another little nervous glance over his shoulder there just to reassure himself that he has got victory in the bag. 200 meters to run. And Bekele can see the finish line now. He continues to drive hard for the line with that inimitable style. The winner of the Berlin Marathon last year in the second fastest time in history dropped out of that same race just a few weeks ago, but the good times are back for Beckley. This is a fabulous run from Kenanisa Beckley. The Olympic goals he has a plenty, world titles he has a plenty, but he is the winner of the Kolkata Steel 25k race here in this wonderful city today in a time of just outside 73 and a half minutes, and uh, he's beaten the opposition into submission by a big, big margin over the last few miles, few kilometers.
chance for us to catch our breaths there as uh, Kenanese catches his breath just after the finish line wearing bib number one and he certainly is number one in the hearts and minds of everyone across the world the victory sign and of course it's more than the V it's the numero uno from Bekele and he is the champion he knows he's the champion and all of us along with him can soak in the victory at the Tata Steel Kolkata 25k and there comes Tuimai not too far behind him we couldn't see him in shot but I think it's not an, a, not a bad time for Tuimai jersey number five no it's a great time for Tuimai and uh, Sule coming through there now Tuimai is just 21 years old Sule is 20 so the young pretenders to the throne coming through in second and third places behind the king but for the moment they will have to look up to him and continue to train hard and hope to uh, wrestle that uh, mantle of world number one from his hands. And there comes Avinash Sable. What a wonderful race from Avinash Sable. He's getting a standing ovation and soak it in, young man. This is a historic moment. He wasn't too far behind the champions. The likes of Kennedy's of Bekele were only about a minute and a half ahead of him. And that smile tells the story. Yes, he might be in fourth place, but he was a very close fourth place behind Bekele, Tuimai and Young Sule. Great moment for Indian running, Tim. Well, I'll tell you what, mostly why it's a great moment because he's the course record for the Indians was 77 16 he's just run unofficially I got him at about 75 13 he's just not two minutes of the Indian course record that is a monstrous leap that is a leap from being national standard to international class here is Lakshman and last year's uh, champion and Lakshman is going to finish second amongst the Indians by the looks of things but from Avinash that is an astonishing performance here this morning I'm absolutely delighted for him and for Indian running by Avinash Sabli that is absolutely monstrous. And Kalidas there, we think, is coming through maybe ahead of Lakshmanan. You're right, he is. Kalidas Hirave there, just coming into shot at the finish line in the white vest. There he is. He joins uh, the Italian. And uh, just behind that Saurav Ganguly, Mike Powell with the three champions. But I'm sure they're going to have a quick word to uh, Avinash Sable and... Kalidas Hirave, what a wonderful run from both of them. Lakshmanan was the brightest of them as far as his vest is concerned, but he'll have to settle for third place among the Indian runners. Still very creditable from Lakshmanan, but he's been outdone by both uh, Avinash Sable and Kalidas Hirave. Well, we can go back to the elite women now. They're a little way further back down the road, but now they are racing as well. The uh, pre-race favourite, Kipper, up there to the right of picture in the darker blue vest is still giving her best. But it is indeed a, a very competitive race. We expected it to be this way. And certainly uh, looking there at the athlete in the middle of picture, to the left of picture, hard to identify these athletes, I have to say. Kipper up to the right with those flailing arms beginning to look like she's under real pressure here. That would be um, Azimiro. I think it's Deji to Azimiro, you're right. This is her debut, Azimiro, and in fact, uh, I was checking out her details last night preparing for this, and I could find just about zero information from her other than she has a reasonably good 5,000 metre time, 5 kilometre time, on the roads in Addis Ababa. She's run 15.54. Well, at altitude, Addis Ababa, of course, the Ethiopian capital is at about 8,000 feet. The air is thinner. There's less oxygen to breathe in. It makes it much tougher to run. So 15.54 is a very strong time at altitude. And it would appear that that is being reflected in the quality of her run here today. Faluna Matanga is in the white, right to the, to the right of Hela Kiprop, keeping them honest at the moment. Matanga, she's running a pretty quick race. And Kiprop, because of her style, looks as if she's about to collapse any moment. But that's just the way she runs. She does, doesn't she? Yes, I know. Kiprop looks... Uh very uncomfortable the head back in the blue vest there but Matanga what a great little athlete she is the Tanzanian she's tiny dwarfed by Kiprop she's 25 years old now she was 16th in the world cross-country championships uh, earlier on in the year in Kampala Uganda was Matanga in the white vest there so she's fabulously strong despite being in appearance very very slight very frail but she is strong make no mistake so uh, look great to see her giving a good account of herself yeah, looks like we're going to have, uh, it's a three-way fight at the moment. Azimero 
Matanga, and of course, the favorite, Hela Kiprop in the, the dark blue. There's a fourth athlete there behind Kiprop, just trying to identify that athlete. I think it might have been Weldu of Eritrea. We'll have to see. Yeah, that, that would be good, you know, when you see nations like Eritrea, we have seen them on the map, but uh, distinctly behind the likes of Ethiopia and Kenya. So it'll be good if Eritrea can uh, find themselves up there. It would be wonderful, but again, it's all about numbers. It's all about how many athletes you can throw at it and how many of them will uh, carry it, will stay focused, train hard and rise to world-class level. Well, let's have a look at the leaderboard now. Kipper up there to the right of picture was pre-race favourite at 23 kilometres. She led in 119.06. And uh, certainly with Matanga, it is Dibabe Kuma is the other athlete there. Kuma, the 21-year-old Ethiopian who has a fabulously fast 10-mile time of 52 minutes 52 from the Netherlands a couple of years back. So she was, again, one of my favorites. She's a massive talent at the age of 21 to run that fast. It would have, she would have been 19 at the time. Kuma. And she is there in the background, look, in the white vest, in fourth place. She is playing a very cagey game. I wonder if she's biding her time. Yes, uh, I think we've seen that wonderful race from Kenaniza Bekele. I think it's time to hear from him. He is with Ridima. Well, Kenanisa, after 21 Olympic and World Championship titles, how special does this one make you feel? And how was the run? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it was fantastic, you know, because uh, my first time here in India, you know, to winning here, you know, for me, is, uh, you know, more and more, you know, uh, I make history. So I'm so happy to win here also. And if someone aspires to become like you, what do they have to keep in mind? Of course, they have to be... Uh, uh, think to uh, first and you know all the time you know hard work uh, till the success you know they have to uh, work hard you know they don't have to be lazy you know well clearly you're a living legend thank you so much and congratulations yeah thank you very much thank you wonderful words there from Kenaniza Bekele the words that he said will echo in the minds of Kolkata I made history he certainly did Tim well, that's a very awkward position, uh, moment there for the elite athletes to be weaving, and the elite ladies to be weaving through traffic of the 10K runners. We knew this would probably happen today, and it's something that we would obviously have to try and deal with in future years because it, you could have an accident that way. But the ladies were developing a really good race there. Interesting, Kennedy Sebekele said, you know, this is a historic moment because it is the first international race in Kolkata and Bekele has become the winner and he's clearly very aware of the significance of this moment. Here are the four leaders in that women's race. I'm very interested to watch Kuma there in the background, although she's just beginning to lose a bit of ground at the moment. And it's the tiny figure of Matanga who would appear to be putting on the pressure there. I and mean, she looks like a little girl amongst these tall figures, uh, both uh, uh, Azimoro and Kiprop, very tall indeed in comparison. but. Well, she's really running with a sort of frantic gait at the moment. Also, a very compact running style for uh, little Matanga from Tanzania. And uh, Hela Kiprop, well, she never looks like she's going to win until she actually breasts the tape at uh, the finish line. And here they come, plowing through uh, the uh, 10K runners. It's going to be a little bit... Oh, they just had to dodge a couple of the officials there and make sure they stay on track trying to keep some of the 10k runners there's Filuna Matanga's car 25 years old Matanga and uh, an athlete with a personal best of only 234 for the marathon but she's part of the Tanzanian team for the athletics world championships this last summer so she does have plenty of experience in her national colors so she's clearly a very very tough character mentally absolutely towering over is uh, Azimaro there in the light blue to write a picture. They appear to have dropped uh, Kuma, Tubabe Kuma, who has eased back as this surge continues towards the finish line. 83 minutes on the clock. The world best this year is uh, 89 minutes, is 79 minutes. That was by Mary Kaitani when she ran in the London Marathon earlier on this year. This is going to be very close between these three now. As you said, Kuma has dropped back, so it's going to be Azimaro, Matanga, Hela Kiprop. These are the three heading for the elite finish at the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K. The first time we're seeing the race going international. It's going to go down to a sprint, there's no doubt about it. Almost 84 minutes on the clock, and that tells me that what we saw earlier was indeed the case. Uh, 
Gautam because they were running very conservatively in a tightly bunched pack. Nobody was really pushing the tempo along and attacking the clock. Well, now, of course, these ladies are surging and accelerating, but the chance of a very fast time today has gone. Kiprop there to the right of picture in the background, just beginning to struggle with her head back. She looks to me like she's hanging on to the pace that's being laid down here by Dejitu Azimero with a tiny figure of Matanga to the left there. Now just beginning to lose a meter or two as Azimero turns the screw once again. And look at the surge of Azimero now. 500 meters to run. And the Ethiopian begins to kick away. Matanga, the tiny athlete in the white vest, has had to relinquish the lead and she's in third place probably will finish in that position as a Zimro now surges towards the line she's got one gear after another and Hella Kiprop is having real trouble handling this young Ethiopian fabulous running from a Zimro now this will be by far the biggest win of her career we think this is actually her first race ever outside of Ethiopia well she has grasped the opportunity with both hands as she charges towards the line now there's the reverse view Azimro is 78, Hela Giprop 71. The tiny figure of Matanga there, like a little girl chasing them in third place. She wears 74. But Dejitu Azimro, this is a new name on the world distance running scene. The production line from East Africa just continues. Inside the last 200 meters now. Azimro grimacing now as the line approaches. About 100 meters to run. And Ethiopia have found a new star on this day in Kolkata. The first international edition of the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K is going to go to Ethiopia's Dejitu Azimro as she heads for the line. Azimro it is who's going to take this one by 20 yards or so. 125.58 there or thereabouts her winning time. The pre-race favourite Hela Kiprob of Kenya is in second place and third. It was indeed the white vest of Matanga. Fabulous surge there from Azimro. Timed that attack to perfection. Very nearly went off the track moments earlier at about the 50 meter mark. She thought she had to turn onto the other side of the road. Luckily the officials pointed her in the right direction and there was not enough in the tank for Hela Kiprop from Kenya to catch up with her. So it's that battle between Ethiopia and Kenya once again. And this time Ethiopia triumphs. The young 18 year old on her debut triumphs over the much more experienced and the favorite Hela Kiprop. Well, Azimero there taking a drink to the right of picture. Absolutely delighted that win. Seven and a half thousand dollars. It'll be the biggest payday of her life. That is a life-changing amount in Addis Ababa. I mean, it is a monstrous amount of money to take back to Ethiopia for this young lady. Fabulous. I mean, it really is lovely to see these lives being uh, changed so dramatically. After months and months of hard training, they get an opportunity. They grasp it with both hands. And uh, she wrestles control of the race over the final few hundred meters there from the far more experienced Hela Kiprop. And she's beaten a wonderful athlete there in Kiprop in second place. To the right of picture, Kiprop is a 221 marathon runner. She's one of the best marathon runners in the world. She's been a very, very consistent racer in Bangalore over the last three years. Fourth, second, and third in Bangalore. But Azimro, the new name, is the champion. Yes, and uh, little Failuna Matanga from Tanzania, yet another country that uh, often produces not quite as many as Kenya and Ethiopia, but keeping her nation on the map and just holding up that number three. Well, Matanga has got a big future as well. She had a fabulous run back in March in the sweltering heat of uh, Kampala in Uganda, where they held the World Cross Country Championships. And if she coped with that heat, then she will cope well with summer racing. And I suspect the temperature has climbed a little bit over the last hour or two. And I can just see El Surya having come in. I reckon she would be the fastest of the Indian women. She's just come in about 30 seconds ago. You can see her there in the yellow vest, the champion from Delhi, uh, giving a good account of herself. For the longest time, she was up with this leading group of uh, Kiprop, Azimarao, and Matanga, and even Kuma. And we, and we saw Valentine Kipkita finishing just now. That was a, a difficult day at the races, Valentine Kipkita, one of the pre-race favorites. She's come in a couple of minutes or more behind that leading trio. I reckon Surya even finished ahead of her. And uh, let's go down to Redima now. Tara Steel.
Well, the elite races are done now, and we can confirm the results for you in that men's 25k here in the Tata Steel Kolkata 25k. Kennedy Sebekle winning by some uh, 40 seconds or so in uh, the race today from Twemai of Eritrea. Brilliant run from Bekele, totally dominant with that big surge over the last six or seven kilometers. Sule in third place, but the big news really domestically is the fourth place of Avinash Sable. The Indian they're running 115.17, improving the course record by over two minutes minutes sublate that is a monstrous leap forward for indian distance running and there indeed is the indian result card sublate winning with 115 17 by just over a minute from hirave with lakshman and last year's champion 117 13. great progress today for the indian distance runners and let's have a look at the elite uh, women's distance results today. There is Dejitu Azimuro confirmed as the champion, 1.26.02. A slowish time, it was a tactical race, there's no doubt about that. Hella Kiprop, though, the pre-race favourite, just behind her in second place. And Tiny Faluna Matanga taking third in 1.26.11. The best of the Indians, Surya, with the fifth place, 1.26.53. So again, good running from the Indian ladies. Yes, we